canceled that uh, the DJI gimbal, and for some reason, when I was using the app, it like it makes that static. I don't know why. I got to figure that Who out. Cares but... about the static? Look at that dent, dude. Yeah. Hi there, this is Joe Garcia with the Dent Time PDR podcast, and today we are with a very special guest, the Kobe Bryant of PDR, Mr. All Out Dent uh, himself, Mr. Shane Rosas. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <Happy to be laughs> here, <man>. <laughs> right on, dude. It's good to have you. You're going to tell us about uh, this extreme PDR repair you did on a blue Camaro. Yep, Absolutely. Right on, man. Right yeah, on. We're going to break it down. <laughs> yeah, and our fearless leader is here with us today, Mike Toledo. He's going to uh, help us. Put a, there he is. There he is. Whoa. Wow. Well, <laughs> it's better late than never. <laughs> he was, was awesome. He's probably thrilled that you referenced him as Kobe Bryant. You know, Kobe Hey, Bryant. bro. Yeah, All right, yeah. <laughs> so I had a feeling. Well, welcome, homie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Be here, man. Welcome. So Joe and I want to, what we want to accomplish in this podcast with you is why the hell did you even try this dent? <laughs> uh, the breakdown of the dent. And yeah. we're, we're, we're referring to uh, this one right here, <clears throat> which is a mofo. And we're going to play the video. I mean, I'm just going to play it from the beginning here. Might hear a little static or whatever. Yeah. You know what? I was... Um... I was using the gimbal, the uh, the DJI gimbal, and for some reason, when I was using the app, it like it makes that static. I don't know why. I got to figure that Who out. Cares but... about the static? Look at that dent, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, what were you thinking, Shane, dude? I mean, this is absolutely nutty. Dude. I don't know, man. I don't know if I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. we're gonna break. We're gonna break this down. All right. Um, I want to, I think we were talking earlier because here, the truth is folks, we, he was, Shane was didn't Joe asked this awesome question and Joe, you're going to ask it again. Cause I think Shane will this time. Yeah. You probably come up. He had a great answer. He's probably going to even have a better answer. Don't steal my <laughs> answer now, Shane. And, <laughs> and uh, it's about, listen, man, it's about motivating each other. And Joe, I don't want to steal your question because let's Go just for it, dude. You're not still I, don't know, I don't even remember what, how you said it. Yeah, I don't even I mean, remember what I said. <laughs> Oh yeah, what question? I don't really know. That, no, Joe, like, go for it, dude. Like, what did you say to Shane, dude? And this oh well, uh, you know, man, I, I asked you a, a few questions. I don't know if all of them were awesome, yeah. but <laughs> one of them was. <laughs> my question's a bad question, man. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> uh, no, man, I think uh, you know that that repair. I don't know if I've even attempted that, and uh, but right. seeing that you've right. done it, I I'm inspired by it, man, and. Uh, I, I think uh, it can be inspiring or, or maybe even, you know, demoralizing for somebody <laughs> looking at it, thinking that they got to fix something like that. I mean, I think one right. of the questions I had asked when we because obviously we, we had had this conversation already and and uh, somebody forgot to hit record. <laughs> <laughs> I won't mention it. Anyway. <laughs> but we uh, yeah. we talked about it uh I mean, we, we went into, we're, we're going to go into the, how yeah, Shane we'll, repaired this and sure. what his approach was step by step. And, uh, but we also touched on, you know, these, these types of repairs. Do you think Shane that every technician needs to do repairs like this at some point in their career? I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think it's a, I don't, I would say, I don't think it's a requirement. Um, I mean, if I'll be completely honest, I don't think, I don't think every technician may have the capabilities to get to that level. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, and that's not to just be like cocky or anything like that, but I do think that, you know, based on, you know, who I've, you know, people I've met and other techs I've seen, like, I, I do think that there's, each tech has their limits, I think, but I do think that given the right, you know, guidance and the right, you know, if, if the right fundamentals that um, I, th I do think that, you know, as the industry progresses, that I do think more people will be able to get to that level. Um, 
but I don't think it's a requirement, you know, necessarily to have to to make it to doing, uh, you know, complex repairs like that to have a successful um, career in PDR. Um, you know, it just it really just it depends. You know, it's going to. I think it depends from person to person and what their goals are, uh, what their you know business model is, and what they want to strive for. Um, you know, I do think you need to be very motivated and very driven and wanting to, you know, be at that level. I think you really have to have that like desire um, to to have a chance to you know repair de damage of this caliber. You know, is, is what I was what I would say. You know, I don't think it's necessary though. Yeah. So so, so what did motivate you to take on that mess there i mean wow it just it like it looks like aluminum foil man yeah uh, honestly man it's just it, i i think it's just it built it i think i've just had it's my competitive nature in a sense like not necessarily that i'm competing but you know i see other i see other technicians constantly you know you know like bryce and you know you mike you know you got you know just other technicians, you know, Steve and, you know, we all, everybody doing constantly doing, you know, pushing themselves and doing complex dance. And it's like, you, you just constantly want to, you know, not like one up them, but you're like, all right, I got to get, you know, I want to get, I need to get something else out there, you know, and, you know, I can do that. You know, if this person can do it, I can do it. And uh, yeah, there's that video, Mike, of like halfway through where it was yeah, like, I was, say, I, I was gonna say, I don't want people to think that Shane was done. This was the end. This is the mid yeah. midpoint or close. I wouldn't say mid, this is beyond midpoint. This is at yeah. your cleanup stage, basically. Yeah. Right? yeah, this was probably, I would say about five hours in, probably around that, yeah. uh, around that, around that time. Joe, I want to add to your to your statement, your question, Shane. What you just said to you said, well, I'm not trying to one up. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't sugarcoat it, dude. Right? <laughs> if you, if you I'm trying to one up to, myself. <laughs> if you're trying to get better, then then I don't know what to tell you. And I, yeah, I mean, no, you're, yeah, you're trying. Right. right, right. I mean, we we all have a competitive. Well, yeah, what I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to to not and not in the in the in the yeah, point I, of like I'm. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, you are. Yes. What's that? In a humble yeah. way, you're trying. Yeah, to it's, it's 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 a it's a it's a competitive kind of a you know like you know with between your peers you know it's it's a friendly you know you're you're pushing yeah, that, each other you know. That, that, Shane, I, I now. I have to stop you right here because yeah. I got so many questions. Joe's got so many questions. We got a lot of little material to get through to like about sure. this repair because I, I want to be able to cover for the newbies and then the veteran techs. Even the vet, the veteran techs right now are going, all right, dude. I know how I would probably try to do that, but I want to sure. hear your take on how you do that. I want to know how you yeah. cleaned up this section right here, dude. Like the over here where that, where that scratch was, where the deepest part, where the knot right. was. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. How did you do that, dude? Um, like where the body line was here, yeah, like right there on the left side, left scratch, dude, where that knot um, was, dude. So, this, oh, the, sorry. Uh, this, this part right here in the middle, that, that, not, oh, not, not stuff, dude. Like that, oh, that right there. Like the bot by the bottom edge there. Yes. That, how did you clean that up, dude? Um, I just, I just had to, um, I really just kept. Just, I, I had to, I, it, at that point, it was um, just go, getting into the, getting into sharper, you know, my sharper tips, you know, um, uh, I think I was using, actually, no, I think I was using um, the, I was using the edgy tools, um, like the flying saucer. <laughs> The, the like oh, the stainless yeah. steel flying saucer because it, it you can pinpoint it very well and you can and i could push hard without making like super without making sharp uh highs you know, you know what you're talking about, though? i don't know what the flying saucer let, tip let is me go, let me go grab it i'll go grab it all right. Go get it all right joe yeah I, i'm not sure i'm not i haven't caught up on the the edgy tools mushroom head or something i'm not sure yeah i did see the dent craft uh mushroom head like it looked like the largest one with the red uh 
coating on it, rubber coating on it. So it's a metal mushroom tip with a red uh, rubber coating on it. And he did mention that, uh, that he used that with a flat bar. It looked like, uh, let's see, uh, Anaconda. Is that yeah. what that was? No, no, I think the one he's using is the care point. A care point. Yeah. My bad. That's a care point. That's right. So, uh, yeah, he did mention that he was using that quite a bit, but I, I'm not aware of what the flying saucer tip looks like, but, uh, Man, I'll tell you what, I, I don't know how he was able to stabilize that thing so well just with that one cargo bar, which I know you're going to show that in one of the clips here. Yeah, these guys uh, have shown his couch, his lovely couch, and, uh, you know, uh, whatnot. <laughs> That's what it looked like when Kane's at work. Something naughty was going to happen, dude. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the uh, – let me get it in here. Uh, okay, that's exactly what I was thinking. You're yeah. Using. Okay. So yeah. this guy, whoa, 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 whoa. It's backwards, yeah. but yeah. So I yeah, this guy, and, 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 it, and this, this is uh this was off the care point. It's titanium tip. Yeah, and then obviously just you know the R4 metal, and then really when I got down to the end, I was really with the little the gator. This is a gator tooth or something like that. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Super super so sharp. So, so see how different Shane is since, uh, since you know, since you trained with me. Right. I mean, uh, I'm gonna just. I, we don't have to go into all the details, uh, folks. He, Shane trained with me in 2012. Only took two weeks of training, but it's not because Shane was super talented. I, I and he is. Don't get me wrong, okay, as you can tell. But you have to have a mindset. Right, you guys, and if you you want to get better, you want you have to want to get better, man. Right? Like, right. And going back to your question, Joe, should everybody do this, man? And well, do you think anyone can survive? Is that what your question you said? Do you think anyone do they have to do these type of dents to have a great career? Is that what oh, you yeah. said? Have you know? a successful yeah. PDR career, yes. Yeah. Because right. I, I personally, I personally think you 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 have to in a way if you're going to be a, if you want. To consider to be a top tier tech you have to at least attempt these type of repairs yeah because you can't yeah to, to be a top tier tech yeah i mean i think that maybe that might be a little different than i would say maybe being successful you know what i mean uh i guess i guess it depends on the which aspect or, or which you how know we, how we define how, how, how you're looking at it you know yeah. <laughs> let me be yeah. the devil's advocate on that okay so let, let me give you a true story experience story so my, when my stepdad back in 1990 and 91 um uh, we're you know doing dents there was a company out here in san diego called just dings dude. just okay. dings and he killed it dude in the beginning he was actually one of the six super successful companies out here in san diego but he never wanted to do anything bigger than door dings and, and credit card size dents. He, he, right. he refused to do it because he was making such a good living at doing what he's doing. Well, his techs got better than him. Everybody got better than him. They, he was kind of naive and he's kind of had that ignorant mindset that he didn't need to get better. And guess sure. what? Today he is not in business, dude. Sure. I'm just saying, I'm and Joe, if cars, and that's another subject maybe maybe now or later but as long as cars are going to be made out of metal and aluminum we're only going to be doing this is the beginning yeah, yeah. right i mean every, believe it or not we're all going to be capable if we want to be doing repairs close to bryce kelly maybe not as fast or whatnot but we're on that path and yeah. We have to think about body shops, like where are we going to be at? And and are you, Shane, one day you're going to get a shop, dude. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You're, you're going to be called, you're going to be, this is paintless collision repair. <laughs> right. Right. And body yeah. shop, insurance companies yeah. are going to start, they're going to, I guarantee it's going to cut, it's coming soon, guys. It's coming soon. Matter of fact, I'm having a, another, another guest on Veil Training. They have something super huge about the insurance companies and about being certified. Okay. But this is why I'm saying this is going to, and it's going to help us techs who do repairs like this, because guess what? We're going to be the first ones to, to, to be called upon if there's no, yeah. no, no paint damage. Yeah. Well, so, I, I think you're right. And uh, 
I think that in Shane's case, you know, since you bring up certification, I, I don't know that someone like Shane even needs to be certified, right? I mean, his certification is his, his videos and his, and that's, his proof. No, yeah, right? Joe, you got a great point because that's how I feel. I even told Vale, I, I talked to Vale a few days ago. And I said, really, up to this point, I didn't really feel like there was a, there was a reason to be certified because there was there was nothing at stake. There was nothing being given back, or or it was up to us to promote it, right? If you want to be certified, and there's nothing wrong with me, I don't want to put anybody down for being certified. I'm just saying, it, does it bring? Did it bring you more business? Right. You know what I mean? And for the most yeah. part. Most people can say, no, it didn't, unless you really pushed it hard and said you certified. Mm -hmm. However, the, the big bomb or the big drop, the mic drop on this is that Vail is actually working with a major, major insurance company who are going to basically help the certified technicians get work through that, through this, their program. So interesting. it's worth hearing. So you guys will check it out. Listen, and Joe, I'd like you to be on there if you want to listen to some, you know, answer those questions. Of course, you're you're, yeah. you're going to be there. Um, Absolutely. So, going back to, to, to sustaining your question and talking, this is Shane. You, you're on the right path. Anybody who wants to do these type of repairs, I think it's it's an investment into wanting to get better. Yeah. Can you make a living, a great living? Yeah, sure, comfortable. And you want to be out in 10 years, which I think is a great plan. But if you want to be doing it for 15, 20, 30 years, yeah. And you're going to have to face the music, man, because these cars are getting lighter and these dents are yeah. getting bigger. They, yeah. They, you know, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You know, it, it's, I mean, I, you know, I think, you know, yeah, you, de you definitely have to be able to fix, you know, complex dents. I mean, this, I mean, I would say, you know, this fender is, is definitely on the edge of, you know, like it's pretty, you know, like that's high up there. You know, I mean, there's a lot of big damage that, that I, you know, I mean, I, I, I know a lot of us, we do, we do, you know, we do pretty big dents almost on us, almost on a, on a daily basis, you know, but this is definitely in its own like category, you know? So, yeah. well, let's say uh, you'd, so we were breaking this down before, right. and before the recording didn't record. Um, <laughs> Or before the person forgot to hit the record. Yeah, damn it. So you, brought, you broke this down. You said just, right. I did this step one first. I did yeah. step two. Yep. And then, and then between step two and step three was this I, right here. I did a lot of a lot of reflecting, a lot of questions. Two point five right here, right? Yeah. 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 Um, this would I would say was between three and four is the hardest, dude. I that, and right. Hundred percent. Like, right where that like, arrow starts yeah. over, um, halfway through it, shall I say? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was one hundred percent the hardest part. Yeah, from that body line to the other end, that was that was the hardest part for sure, for sure. Joe, how would you start that repair, dude? Well, you know, again, for our listeners, you know, we 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 had all this conversation already, and so. I'm I'm trying to Rub think of in. what we said. What we said, I know, no, but I want them to know that, you know, if any of this sounds out of order, or if we repeat ourselves, I don't know if I repeated it on this version or on the, the other version. But anyway, that being said, um, I would have probably done it the opposite, Shane. And yeah. here's this a perfect example of how we do think how you know, our perspectives are different. You know, every technician has their way of doing things. Right. And it, it I might not have been as successful on, so on it. You're, you're one here. I would have gone for the arch, the body line, and that edge yeah. where, where Mike just put the one. Yeah. Um, I would have constant, focused all on that first and then worried about the rest. Um, yeah. And that's not to say I would have just bulked it all out at once either, but I would have. Right try to release that bottom just a little bit to to just kind of make it more manageable and then probably approach the crowns but let me tell you this Shane when yeah. I first saw that before I thought how is this guy going to do this and here's another example of how I overthink everything and Mike knows this about me uh, I pictured you 
building some kind of contraption out of two by fours <laughs> and basically a fr imagine a wood frame that yeah. basically frames the the, the area, outer yeah. perimeters of the den right? right so so to basically put pressure onto the crowns connected to something underneath another frame of two by fours yeah. with the tire off or something and then you leverage on the two by fours underneath while it applies simultaneous pressure pressure yeah. Yeah. on the crowns. Right. I thought that's the only way that that's going to come out clean and, you know, in a <laughs> decent amount of time. And here you are just using a big cargo bar. <laughs> you, you positioned it in one spot and the, at where that number one is, yeah. where, where Mike put the number one. Yeah. And you were able to, you did it completely the opposite of how I would have done it. You right. started it at the, at the, the, the forward bottom. most yeah. part at the bottom, the more shallow dent, as yeah. you mentioned, there was a brace there uh, just to the to the right of it towards the leading edge yeah. of the fender. Yeah. And you managed to just relieve pressure and kind of get it manageable by starting yeah. there. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So you said yes. from so, here over is braced, right? Yes. Okay. Correct. Yeah, that, that's pretty accurate, Mike, right there. OK. I mean, we have to, we have to not, you know, more, more at an angle, more, more at the same angle as the edge of the fender there, like the, the braces or the, the plate or whatever is underneath there is basically at the same angle as the front of that fender uh, edge where it meets the front of the bumper right there, like angled like that. That's kind of how the brace was as well. Okay. Or, or the, not the brace, but it, the, the skin, you know, the, the, you know, whatever was behind their bracket. Yeah, this is this is pretty pretty pretty. And so, yeah, and, and and so I mean, Joe, my my thought press process was, um, you know, uh, if you if Mike, if you go back to that to that photo, oh, that's how so that's how the cargo bar set. Up. But um, oh, this which one? Uh, go to with? go to my the other my photo where I have it uh, where you have a listed one. Yeah. So my thought process, Joe, was that um, I wanted to you know, so I wanted to really mainly really want to start starting with two you know that's that's you know that's the main damage there right number one yes that was damaged but it was relatively soft so my my thing was that that top crown above you know two and three and all that it, it's actually very 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 tight so you know i you know i think starting if to start at like number three there there was still a lot there was still like so much pressure the way that it was pinched at the top like i mean it's not i mean it's not even a crown it's it was pinched you know um like right in between like right where the arrow right at the, where the arrow is between two and three right up there you can kind of see where it has like, like a little mountain that that was very pinched so my thought process was it okay if i release if i release number one that's releasing that's going to release some pressure off this crown between one and two okay which is going to soften up that this which is, is going to well, yeah it's moving the metal flow is moving this so way it's going to it's going to pull that crown down it's going to soften up number two a little bit and because i was like if i push i can't push between number two because there's that crown on the bottom and that super tight crown on the top that it was just it's really just going to was going to be fighting me that was what it was i was thinking so i was like all right let me release the pressure starting with number one where there's the least amount of pressure just to just to free up at whatever i can above it because you know i wanted it already i already knew how much pressure it was in how much locked you know pressure was going to be between two and four that if i did number one first i was just releasing on some tension off that off that panel you know or off that area uh so let me ask you a bit easier <laughs> Shane, that makes so sense. when you got to this point right here, right, right here, yeah. were you tapping first or were you pushing first? Right, I was push, here? I was pushing first. I, okay. I, like I said, I, I moved from one to two, like I, in the same way that it's, it's. I actually went up in that curve of like went from one, curved up to the edge of the two and slow and just walked it and walked it, walked it, walked it out all you know towards number three. You know, and as I got to the body line, it was, very, you know, it was very locked up as I got to that body line there. Like, you know, the right side of, you know, where number two is, you know, I was able to push it. I was able to walk that metal down and walk it out 
um, and just really, you know, and release that pressure on the crown because I wasn't going to tap on that crown until I released that pressure because it wasn't going to do anything. Uh, it had nowhere to go. You know, the metal had nowhere to go at that point until I released that pressure. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I was I was yep. thinking, okay, which one did he, I don't think I would have tapped down either because I probably would have put a, a bunch of tap down. Yeah, it wouldn't, yeah it, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have moved. There was nowhere. For the, the metal, the, the energy of if you were trying to tap that down would go down into the crease and just, it would just stop. It would, the, the crease was too tight that it, the, the energy, I mean, the metal would have nowhere to go to, you know? Yeah. That's super interesting. Uh, what's your thoughts, Joe? Yeah. I, I think it makes perfect sense the way Shane described it, uh, because you, you know, it's that metal flow once again, you know, and, um, I wanted to ask you, Shane, Yeah. you know, how did you know that already? Is this from experience from having maybe oh, yeah. a trial and error from other, other situations or, or yeah. you just have an instinct for it? Yeah. Um, I, you know, it, I mean, obviously, yeah. I mean, the, the, the fact that I do a lot of big dents and the fact that, you know, it's like, I, I, you know, not maybe not this exact end, but I've had similar things, you know, where you, you, you start understanding like, all right, like, I know that I can't do X, Y, or Z because this isn't, these aren't going to give me the results I really want, you know, and like, you know, just, you know, and very much like you do, Joe, like, uh, I just like, when I start these dents, you know, I don't even use my, I don't even use my reflection board or anything, you know, it's all, you know, I'm looking at just the panel and I'm, and I'm really dissecting it and, and trying to break it down before I even do anything, you know, like I want to have my first like 10 steps, like this, I'm going to do this. And then that's, you know, when I do when I do a, it's going to lead me to, you know, part B and part B is going to, you know, like I, I have a, you know, a very methodical, you know, um, you know, way of doing these big dents. And, and that's by sitting there before I even get a tool on it and just, you know, I mean, I'll sit there for five, 10 minutes, like, okay, let me think about this way. And then, you know, like kind of like doing it in my head, like, okay, but I think if I get to that point, it's might something might happen. Let me think about something else, you know? So um, I try you, my you, best. You role play basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I try to do that, you know, before, um, before even starting on the, on the deck. And, and I'll, I'll be honest with you saying that's, that's, that's one of the things I used to do when, when picture taking was first being you know, done, right? Yeah. It, it would send you a photo, a photo through email. Right. And that gave me time. Right. And that's when my repair started getting better because I had a chance to, to role play what type of tool I was going to use. It gave me time to think about my, my, my attack mode. Right. right. Uh, well, maybe this way. No, it gave me a chance to think what worked with similar dents like that. What didn't. Right. And I, I think, Anytime you can, you're doing a big dent like this, and you're coming out to do an estimate. I almost think that you you should reschedule it so you can take pictures, take video of it, right. go home and do your homework, and chew on it while you're doing other customers because that's all you're gonna think about. Yeah, it's a really good technique on how to prepare to do something like that. Yeah, I think it makes a difference, don't don't you, Joe? Yeah, I I think that's a really interesting uh, thing you guys brought up there because it, it's. And the fact that you, you, what you're saying is you kind of like what Paul Corden says, you know, slow down the the process. You know, he's talking, he was referring to the estimation process, but, you yeah. know, it can be applied to the assessment process, which I think, you know, the two go hand in hand. You know, if you're estimating it properly, you're assessing it properly, you're going to ensure that your client or prospect is going to have their car fixed as good as you can do it. And you're also ensuring that you're going to be paid compensated very well on it too. Right. But, and, and that you're going to have all the, the game plan in place. And I think it's really interesting that you guys say that because, you know, Shane, especially dude, you, you're a really fast tech. Like I've watched you, man. Yeah. And, and I know that's part of your game too, is like, <laughs> you like to move quickly. You mentioned earlier that, it took you eight hours to do that repair. Yes. Dude. That, yeah. I probably would have been two days on that thing if I could fix it at all, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. right. I mean, the fact that you take a step back and you slow down the, your process 
And it, like Mike always used to say, you know, slower is faster. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that's like I said, man. You guys, if you want to get that good, you 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 work at it. You you put in the work and and you become better. Yeah. Uh, so I also want to let's just talk about some of the tools you use, the tips, sure. and then let's talk about the pricing, the breakdown yeah. of how much was involved in that and where you, what what you gave. And you don't mind telling the public what you charged, right? No, no, PR industry. <laughs> um, no, no, no worries. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so you you were using this this pogo stick thing yeah. here, right? You yeah. got it at Harbor Freight. Uh, yep. and Harbor Freight. How much was that, dude? Um, I, I want to say uh, it's about, it's about twenty five or thirty dollars, I think. Do you think you would be able to do that repair without you, that? I don't. Based on the other tools I have in my van, I don't think that. Uh, I don't think I would have been able to. For someone um, I, new, for someone new, Shane, what is this, dude? What is what's the purpose of that, dude? So it's it's just it's a it, what it is is just it's a car a cargo bar. But um, the purpose of using it for this repair was, um, you know, as you see in the in the video, um, the the edge there was actually buckled, um, and it was pinched. So it had you know that so that area was going to be weakened. That's going to be the first area once you start pushing. Like that's that's the first thing that's gonna fully give out. So you know, yeah. if, if you don't have something there to uh, support that and 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 hold that in place, um, there's no way that this fender is gonna come out clean. That area is gonna get just destroyed um, trying to, you know, bend it back, you know, m million times and straightening it out, straightening it out, it's going to buckle again, it's going to buckle more and eventually it's going to crack, you know, it's going to the metal is going to crack and, you know, then then the fender's yeah, well, once you get you know. to that point, it's done. I don't care how well yeah. you get it. It's, it's almost it's, a waste of time, dude. Like, yeah, at that point. Done. So, you know, the yeah, so that's you, you need to make sure that yeah, you have a solid platform to push on because yeah, like I said, that's the first spot that I was going to give out and I mean, if that if that blew out and and just completely folded out, I mean, it would have just it would have been you'd have to walk away, you know, you'd have to walk away from that. So Joe and Shane, yeah, this is Joe's specialty right here. Don't give Joe, <laughs> don't give Joe too much time, man. He's gonna assess this like up and down. Sure, He's, sure. This is gonna be this is Joe's realm right here. Uh, yeah. We don't have a um, one day, Joe. We're gonna have a, a digital ruler. We're gonna put right, right here. <laughs> Yeah, um, man. So, sure. Shane, do you use a ruler? Do you put it? Do you estimate this in front of the customer? How do you break this down? But hold on a sec. I'm asking you to. I'm getting putting the cart before the horse, dude. Sure, sure. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let's break this dent down and really kind of dissect what is wrong with this repair. Okay. <laughs> this is, since I got the cursor, yeah. I'll just draw the hell out of it. Joe, if you want to add or Shane want to add, go for it, dude. Sure. Well, sure. We got something in the bit because based on our eyeball, we can say there's a little bit of a dent that goes up in here. So that's a section here. We know there's a nice crown and the border between this dent and that dent that goes all the way around. You've got your little edge still here and you've got your main dent right here. Okay, and this is the one you said you picked number one on, Shane. You yes. Know, first step. Yep. Then you've got another crown here, and it goes all the way right there. We're just going to leave that that because there's okay. no – when I say stages, what I mean is – what I meant to say is that these areas are – you are spending individual time. Right. Tapping or pushing or one or the other or both, right? Right, right. So this is this is time. This is time. That's another time. This is a section, and I call it. This is a big ass war, dude. Right? <laughs> yeah. And there you, they're all, and they're all battles. You, you got all these battles, dude. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How do you yeah. win the war? Well, you got to win one battle at a time, dude. Right? right. It's like it's okay. like attacking, like you said. You're bringing you're you're bringing <laughs> your metal, your infantry. Towards the main battlefield, right? Here. Yeah, there you go. Right? Yeah. yeah. But what I'm trying to say for the customer, to the customer, you're like, if you're a technician and you don't know how to explain to the customer, you got to say, listen, sir, this is a whole section I got to spend on. This is a section. Look, if I took all this away, this den alone is four hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. 
yeah. and now you've got even more complex as the dent gets more this way yeah and yeah. then so, you you have three dimensions there you've got depth to it that's right. Yeah. That's right. And then we haven't even got to the most nastiest part right here. One of the nastiest is this not part. Uh, Shane, you were mentioning in a conversation earlier is that maybe on, on this part, but the you said you were through it. You were trying to get that body line back up and bah, it popped out. <laughs> it locked yeah. pressure for yeah. you, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, behind all this drawing, you see the crease going all the way. <laughs> And what is a crease? A crease is a long pit. Yep. It's one thing reason to take a pit out like that. <laughs> a pit all the way down. Okay. And we know if you don't take the pit down right, you're gonna have what's this, dude? The stitch. Yep. Yep. Right? Yeah. 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 I don't. If people don't know how involved this is way and then and then you still had to worry about this bottom part this is buckled right here too yeah and this is buckled right here yeah, yeah. sorry now and, it's, and, it's pushed, <laughs> and, it's, and, it's, and that edge is pushed in too uh, about probably about an inch you know it's it's you which know, way over here right yeah right yeah right in between those two circles it was you know maybe not an inch but half inch you know it was it was buckled in you know pretty yeah. you can actually yeah if you, you can like you can look at it like with the tire, how where it's pushed, you know, kind of pushed in. Right yeah, let's, well, let's remind Oh, yeah, there's, there's one spot you can see it really well. The yeah, video, see. yeah, the, the picture yeah. actually doesn't do it justice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh there, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dude, I think it yeah. like a side bird bath, dude. <laughs> yep. That thing just looks like a, a, a beer can, dude. Did you open it up and see if Budweiser makes that car, dude? Uh, all right. <laughs> So okay. right, uh, so go, right. I think if you go a little bit farther, it'll show the where it right. right. Like there. You can see where it, the pinch is and and kind of how it curves in. So like you know, yeah. People don't realize how tough that that bottom edge is, dude. That's, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. Shane, Shane, I, I, I look. You, you said you turned that down at first, right? I origi originally, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, I was like, ah, oh, I turned it down for good, dude. <laughs> so, and, 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 okay, and you uh, go away. <laughs> yeah, and we'll have to actually, we, we should actually play. We could talk about how I did that edge too, because I actually bent the inner fender, the inner fender lip. I actually bent it down and straight uh, um, to to reshape that that edge. Interesting. Yeah, so you're talking. You're talking this part right yeah. here. Yeah, so the, the inner lip, so the yeah. lip and the lip inside. Yeah. Um, I use those um, those new those. There's they're fairly new. Those pliers, those edge pl um, the blowout like Yamato? pliers. Uh, no, oh, damn. All right, let me go grab those two. <laughs> I'm gonna go grab those two so, so I can show you. Okay. Yeah, I, I yeah, didn't realize you had unfolded that, and that's. Uh, I wonder if that stabilized it a little more by doing that but uh man i i can't believe he took that on I, I don't know that i would have well it gets you know like this is where it gets hairy because you're starting to work it right you spend you spend four or five hours into it and you're like man you get to the hardest part i gotta give it to shane because I, I listen i might be just like you joe i might actually attack that part because I don't want to waste all my time yes. fixing this. Exactly. And realizing I can't fix that. Dude. Right, right. There's there was too many unknown variables there. Yeah. Uh, so all right. So Shane, what as I was saying, Joe yeah. and I were thinking, you had some balls to actually start finishing, like doing all this. Were you able to test this? At, were you actually cheating over here just to see if you could get to it, or were because Joe and I were saying I'd hate to do four or five hours worth of work. Actually, let me go over here. Let me. I'm yeah, pointing okay. to something else, dude. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I was, okay. So go ahead. Let me let me erase this stuff, dude. So, um, this let me. Right here, you spent a lot of time on this first. You did this first, right? Yeah. 
Joe and I were probably thinking we probably would have tried that because we didn't on some, such a nasty dent like this, we'd want to know if we could do it first. You know what I mean? Right. Instead of spending four or five hours over here getting it nice and clean or wherever we want. Yeah. Were you did was there any point at any given time before you finished all this to know that you could actually do this do this section? I think uh no, you know, as I I honestly I think I was probably I really just I think I was, I was too, I didn't want to jump to that spot because I was like, all right, if I do something wrong on that area, it's over, you know? And I just yeah. felt like I can't, I don't want to even try that until I release a nut and get enough of this other metal moved to like make that area want to move, you know? Like, you know, like, it, you know, because you can see you know, the way that it was curved in and pushed in, I was just like, you know, it, it's just, if I try to do that too soon, I think it, it's just, it, I think it, it would have, I was just, I was too scared to really jump on that. Like, let me yeah. try to push, you know? Um, interesting. It is yeah. interesting, Joe. Yeah. I think I, it, I don't know, Joe. I mean, Shane, he makes perfect sense, dude. He does. Yeah. You don't want to jeopardize, right? You know, yeah. I, we've all been that. It's like, we got a little greedy yeah. and we're like, all right, let me just try that. And then boom, it's done. Like, you know, I, yeah. ah, I should have waited. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, obviously, Shane, you succeeded. Dude, all yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You succeeded. And this is what this is about. Yeah. You know, and that's this great thing about PDR, man. It's everyone has their own style. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. You wouldn't believe how many comments people message me on YouTube and go, I would have started that dent this way or started that way, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, and you know what, and there might, you know, and who knows, like, you know, you know, Joe, like you've asked like, Oh, like if there's anything you would do different, I mean, maybe, maybe if I did, maybe you, if you did start on that side, maybe, it, maybe certain things would move differently. Like, I don't, you know, I can only, you can only, you only get that one shot, you know? Yeah. So, yep. so, you can only speculate. You only get one chance. Yeah, know, it, so. and, um, you know, so, you know, I'm not saying like, oh, like that was the only way for it to be done. You know, I'll never say that. Yeah. Oh, man. And, right. you know, yeah, maybe, maybe, you know, someone's going to watch this and be like, yeah, like I, you know, I think, yeah, you know, maybe this, this think the same way. Like, oh, I, I would have started on the left and worked the other way or, yeah. you know, I, it's really hard to say. I, I think that, you know, I mean, like in, in, for me, when I'm in person looking at it, you know, and just, again, just, yeah, based on other dents I've done, based on other circumstances I've been in, you know, with, with repairing, you know, things like that. It's like, I just, I didn't feel comfortable starting with that, you know, or, or getting to that spot. You know, the way that when I looked at it and I saw, I mean, how folded it was and how pinched it was, I was just like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do something too early like mike like you're saying like do something too early and and then you know and then there's just no point to even do anything else but um yeah i just you know that was just i, I just I, I was just all right i just gotta be patient and uh you know let's we'll, we'll get there when we get there you know basically yeah. um you know well, that's a, it's a great great technique here you mentioned yep. something we again we, we and i want to cover this shane yep. because i i teach the same way you said i i like to fix what goes in what goes out last right or yeah you, first, you, uh, first, first first in last out okay so yeah and my thing is how i i say it a different way and i said listen if you saw this dent happen on video and you want to learn kind of like how to fix it reverse the video right how does the metal come back out? And it usually starts from the outside and it goes back into the deepest. Right. Is that a technique? Is that everything for every dent? No, no. But it's it's a foundation where you you know you can you can cheat. I say as you as you become much more better at what you do, mm -hmm. and you like, because you're fundamentally understand the rules of PDR, yeah. the foundation then you're allowed to break the rules. Right, right. You know how to break the rules and when to break the rules. But when you don't and you're breaking rules and you're just totally messing up things, it's because you don't understand the foundation well enough. And this right. is one of the things of that. And this is why you became successful at it, Shane, because yeah. you're stuck to the fun fundamentals of, of the metal. 
Yeah. Yeah. Your, your instincts serve you well, Shane, and, and the success of that repair is proof of that. Yeah. Um, and great point, Mike, because I think also that, you know, part of our job as PDR technicians is when we do make mistakes and we inevitably will, we have to also know how to fix our mistakes. And That's right. I've done my fair share of that. One hundred percent right, Joe. So Shane, let's get into the part where everybody's like, "How much did you charge?" Yeah. Because I don't think a lot of people know how much you charge for this. Okay. And why did you come up with that price? Okay, first, did you use an app at all to use this, or do you? Uh, so I, I strictly, you know, estimated it, you know, over the phone, you know, via photos and and all that video, and um, I. I I did use the matrix. Um, it ended up being a cash deal. Um, so uh, we basically what we agreed on was uh, $1,600 for this cash. Okay. okay. Was what was what it was what it was. That's yeah. good. That's good. That's so, good. Yeah. Well, we Joe and I, you know, I think, I think with the, I think when I, What's this, that? This, would be a, this Joe, I did say this would be a lot lower than at a body shop on accident, dude. Because I, I, the more I look at this, is like no way, dude. This is, this is at least a two thousand dollar repair at a body shop, dude. You know, and not and not saying that you undercut yourself. Oh, and, and I mean, <laughs> you know, it's uh, you know, it, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure. Uh, I, I think I, I want to say when I, you know, I got off the maybe look, but I, I think when I originally estimated it. it it was, I think it was around eight in the, I think it was in the 18 and some change was what I think I had it at. And then, um, you know, and then, and then it went, you know, and then we just, like I said, I, I, we agreed on 16 cash. So, um, you know, that's, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, what? and I, like I said, it, and as it, I mean, it came out fantastic, you know, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, like the, it's, it's not, you know, hundred percent, you know, there was, there was, you know, still minor blemishes. There is, you know, little, you know a little more texture you know it wasn't perfectly matched with the orange peel or you know there's a little bit there so i think for those little bits of you know um defects and stuff i do think that i, I thought that was a fair price you know um for for the outcome you know th- you know here's here's the thing joe and shane dude right i think that was a great price i mean you got to figure what if figure this if you're doing a normal PDR day, your average PDR day, okay, right. that's really technically normal. But what, yeah. what's your average? What do you? What do you? I'm not, I'm not saying, but you got to make. Sure. You spend, if you're going to give up all these other jobs and you're yeah. going to do one job all day, yeah. yeah. Well, damn it, you better make sure it's your average that you're making, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's another way to think about, you know, what should you charge sure. based on your matrix? You know, the, again, there's the foundation pricing, right? You don't just pull a number out of you, which Joe and I are, we are the, we were conditioned that way for years. Okay. Yeah. The, the second generation techs, third generation techs like yourself are, are a lot better at it than we are, dude, because yeah. you're yeah. seeing the value of your own service. Right. But going back to it, Shane, I mean, I think it was a great job. You spent eight hours practically straight on this, dude, and yeah. you got $1,600. Yep. <laughs> yeah. What would you charge next time for that same dent? Yeah. If you had that same exact. I'd probably be at about, I'd probably be around two grand, I, I think. Yeah. I think two grand would it would have been probably where it, where it needs to be at. Yeah. Yeah. And you and know it, what, Shane? All... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, but... Shane, I was going to say, and you and I, you know what, it'd probably be even 20% better because sure. you understood the dent sure how to fix it quicker you know what i mean yeah, totally yeah, you, you get if you did three of these in a row shane yeah we, we know even though we, we would we wouldn't imagine that we wouldn't volunteer that but <laughs> you three in a row there's you only get better dude yeah that's right Absolutely. that's right man it, you know shane dude that's why i asked you i think i asked you that before uh you know like weeks ago when i saw that repair and, and you and i were talking about it and yeah it's like, would you, you know, would you do one of those every day, basically? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Dude, I mean, I'm I'm literally reading this book right now. It's called yeah. Blue Ocean Strategy. Okay. And it's a business book. And it's a, precisely about what you did there. Right. Uh, basically, the gist of the book is he talks about, you know, all the competition is in the blood red ocean, fishing for the same fish, low quality catches. And 
they're they're subject to their own they're their own worst enemies basically but out in the blue ocean you've got uncontested markets right and you are in an uncontested market with that repair right. so meaning that I, I don't care if a thousand guys are veil certified pardon me veil certification but yeah they're not gonna be able to fix that dude right you you can and a, a handful of people can and yeah. that makes you basically your own competition nobody else can compete with that right you know, I, I think uh, one of those a day. If you all, all you had, all you would have to do is one car a day, yeah. whether it's a low low price of sixteen hundred bucks or <laughs> or a you know higher price, you know, or, or insurance money, you know. Sure. Add this too uh, to you guys too. I mean, I think that what happens, and Joe, we've talked about this behind podcast doors, is that what happens is that the the techs, like Shane, like like the new, new newer techs they're 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 their skill is getting like this it's going like this right but they they don't bring the value of their service up with their skill yeah a lot of guys would say all right i could take that dent out now in four hours now so i'm going to charge a thousand bucks yeah and like they're like unconditionally punishing themselves because just because you're fat because you got faster and you got right. better yeah, right, you're, yeah. gonna give, you're gonna give yourself a pay cut every time yeah what is what is wrong with you that's yeah. why people are paying you for your experience not for right. your time right yeah. yeah it's it's just it takes we got to justify it to our to the people out there who are doing debts right. like that and charging cheap there's guys out there shane and joe you know that who are capable of doing debts like that but they're afraid to charge the value of their service right right uh, yeah yeah you know and, and well and then they get burned out and they don't want to do those repairs i mean right right, right? Sure. i mean you know mike and i just had an, another episode shane where i you know i did a pretty gnarly job on a on a rav4 and yeah. i only i only got 500 bucks for it dude and it was it price guided well over that but yeah i did it as a learn you know uh i got paid to learn kind of experience because i wanted to see like what, I, what sure. I could do with it and the customer's budget was you know just was, at 500 yeah. bucks you know right. But, right and that's what i was going to address too is that you know going back to what you got for that repair right. it's subjective too because you know, sure. we had also talked about the conversation that you had with the customer right. and, and what his situation right. was, yeah. um, yeah. you know, and, and how he, you know, it was kind of an emotional thing on his side sure. because his, his sure. father had bought him that car yeah. and his father recently passed. He was, right. it was a sentimental thing and he kind of tugged at your heartstrings, right? Yeah. And but he, he wanted to me he, he wanted that car as it was and you right. were the one who was able to do that and right. arguably i i don't know very many pdr techs who would have been able to do that repair shane i don't know that i could have fixed it quite frankly uh because i would have probably done it in the reverse way and i don't know man that was a really really gnarly one man yeah i i think i think yeah shane shane's a Unbelievable tech, dude. Like very good. The very it's it's the mindset. Joe, don't underestimate yourself. Remember, I told no, you. I'm not. I'm hey, not, dude. I, I think it's cool, dude. It's okay to doubt your you doubt your skills, but don't train you. Don't doubt yourself, man. I'm just kidding. No, I mean, no, no. I know. I know. And, and seriously, no. I, I because you know, I I think that, like Shane said, you know, you only get one shot at right. a repair like that, and. When when it comes down to why, like you're going to make a mistake on that repair, sure. I don't care who it is. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> it's a matter of how much right. of that mistake can you, you know, yeah. fix and and recover from. Right, and, and at the end have a successful repair. You know, and yeah. um, you know, so I I think uh, you got to give credit where credit is due, sure. and, and I like because I don't think that, oh. like I think our 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 trade is advancing big mm -hmm. time. I, I love it. I love all the new tools and techniques and and the inspiration of like guys like you guys and these, this repair is an example. Yeah. And there's a handful of other people that are doing repairs of that level. And it's 
damn inspiring, dude. It is. And <laughs> it's something to look forward to yeah. and something also to look forward to the new equipment that's going to be coming out as a result and some of the stuff that's already come out. But I think that uh, even still, that being said, and I know more younger, newer uh, talent is going to come out and they're going to learn. They're going to come in like Shane did. Shane came in with the idea that he's going to fix big dents. Back right. way back 11 exactly. or 10 yeah. years ago when you first started, you knew you were going to be fixing big dents. You knew about little door ding repair. Sure. But that's the difference. Sure. Is like Mike and I started yeah. and a lot of uh, veteran tech started. You're a veteran tech now, Shane, but right. but – a lot of us, it started back in the day, and our benchmark was dings like this, maybe right. something like that, you know? Right. But we had no idea that we'd be talking to Shane Rosas, you know, in 2021 yeah. about this blue yeah. Camaro, man. So, <laughs> Shane, what, I, I think it's cool. What, what has been your, your biggest, uh, what do you think has been the most challenging uh, about your career, dude? What do, you, what do you think was the hardest to grasp or, or, would you not want to do it all? If you did it all over again, what would you change? Let's put it that way. Trainer. <laughs> I don't know, Mike, man. I, I mean, like, I, I have to say, man, I mean, I'm, I'm super happy with, with the path that I, that I, that I, that I took, you know, from, from training to now, you know, is, um, you know, one thing is like, I, I, I have, you know, I, I have my way, you know, like I have a mindset and like, that's really like what I stick to, you know what I mean? And I remember, you know, even when I trained with you and I, and I was just, you know, like my mindset was like, you know, I don't want to do any wholesale, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I want to only be retail. And like, that was just like, you know, it was like, it was, that was my mindset, you know? And, you know, with that came, I think a slower growing period, you know, as far as like, you know, getting your clientele base and things like that, because, you know, if you, if you when you get doing a wholesale, you, you're getting a more volume, you know? So I think for me, it was like the first few years, it was like, it was kind of a slow growth, you know, just because I really only wanted to do retail. Um, but that was what I wanted to do, you know? And so I, it's like, I don't reg like, there's nothing I really, I regret as far as like any decisions I've made or things like that. But um, have you had any wholesale I, accounts ever? No, I mean I have body shops, but I don't I don't consider no, those no, you know? no, that's not wholesale. Those wholesale but, you know? Dude, yeah. that's 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 amazing. Usually usually a tech has had at least one or two wholesales yeah. and that's how they generally used as a stepping stone to get yeah. better, quicker and faster. Yeah. So well I mean you, you yeah, were well, yeah, well like we talked, I mean I don't know if that if this part was recorded about, you know, you know, David and all that, you know, and, and after I train I trained with you, um, you know, and I and I started working with David um you know although i didn't have you know a, a lot or you know wholesale lot you know david was giving me you know he gave me you know fairly consistent work you know from right off the bat you know and and i would go down to a shop you know in santa monica you know at, you know three four days a week you know in the start and um you know and and he was giving me the retail jobs that were coming in which, you know, I mean, he was getting good sized dents, you know, and I mean, this is right out of training, you know what I mean? Like, so, um, you know, and I just, you know, that was, and just all that just helped, you know, and, and David really, you know, he, he may not think it, but, or, you know, not, but he really did help me a lot, you know? No, you know? That's, that's because David, you know, in a little history of SOS dent, you know, yeah. he went out there and just, did whatever he could he made it happen mm -hmm. listen I, I say my new saying now is look you can pick your friends but you can't pick your dance dude right, right? and if you right. try to pick your dance you're going to be out of business man. right right you know you, you can't be choosy yeah. and if you want to get really good really fast take on what you're not confident in dude right because right. that's the only way you're going to get better yeah i mean and you know like i said it's so important man i think that your mindset going into learning this art is like, I mean, it's more important even than your natural like skills or learning the skill with your hands and stuff. Like if your mind is not where it needs to be like that really, 
affects your growth, you know. And I was, like I said, I'm not, I'm not lucky. What do, you mean by that? Wait, what do you mean by that? Can you give me, give me, I be more that, you know, I think that, you know, you under, we underestimate the power of the mind, you know what I mean? And I think that when it comes to, you know, like, look, like for me, like learning PDR, like, you know, before I even trained with you, like my mindset was so, I mean, it was a hundred percent set. Like I'm going to learn this and I'm going to be good at it. You know what I mean? Before I even came down to San Diego and trained with you and, you know, and I just, I had that confidence and that, you know, almost like cocky mentality of like, well, fucking if, if this guy can do it, I definitely can do it, you know, and in a way, you know what I mean? Like, just like, and I think just like that confidence really were, I'm like, I, I'm not, a, I was never, I've never been afraid to even try a big dent. You know, I, I, you know, I'm just like, I'm like, all right, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's go. And, you know, and David, like I said, David was giving me <laughs> bigger, de big dents, complex dents right off the bat. And it was like, geez, am I ready for this? But I'm like, let's go. Like, let's do it. I, you know, cause I was confident in, the fundamentals that I had learned with you in that training period that, and that was like, you like, man, just as long as you stick to what you know and not, you know, get out of your mind and, and, you know, psych yourself out and do these, you know, if you have the confidence of like, dude, I, like you can do this, you know, like even when a dent is not going good. And like I said, you're saying maybe there's, there's a point where text may be like, oh, I can't do it. I'm going to give up. We all come across halfway done dense and you know, where they're like, you know, the client will be like, yeah, they he couldn't do it or whatever. And you're just like, that's so crazy. Cause like, I never, like, I never have that mindset where it's like, <laughs> you know, you're like B BS, like I'm going to do this, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah. I, I think that, it's that that aspect is like undervalued when it comes to learning not even just pdr but but anything you know you have right. to have that mindset of you, you have to have like a cocky mindset in a sense to like really push yourself you know but not yeah. too cocky where you're overconfident right because like, especially for guys who maybe are thinking about even getting into pdr and they're watching this for you know yeah. hopefully they are and yeah you you can't it, you have to be confident in a way that you see yourself doing the repair, but not in the thing like nothing's going to be hard. Right. For you. You know right. What I mean? right. 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 Or, or not being aware of like your, like not being aware of like your struggles too. like, not yeah. talking, like I can do it, but like you clearly suck, <laughs> but you know, like, yeah. like, you know, knowing it's, damn, like, okay, I'm not good at this part. Like, <laughs> so this is what I need to work on, but I'm still confident that I can do this. That's right. You know? And, and, and yeah, you know, and, and, and yeah, like I said, it was just, you know, you know, you spend that time, you know, in the beginning you know, where it's like, if it's a big dent, my mind, you know, it was always like, why be scared of a big dent? Because at the end of the day, I got to break it down into small dents and I can do small dents. So if you can do small dents and you do a big, you know, you're breaking down a big dent into small dents, you know, and, it, yeah. and that's really, you know, the mindset, you know, and, um, so it was like, you know, like, I mean, it was like, dang, like a few months in, it's like, I'm doing big dents, <laughs> like, you know, it's, you know, and like, David's giving me dance. I'm like, what do you do? Like, really, David? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, like this is a client's car. Like, okay. You know, well, but, and, that's, and that's the thing, right, Joe? I mean, we were saying, I'm not sure. We do already cover this in this thing. Or did we say it last time about the, the, your dent was a, was a big war, dude. Yeah, yeah, we said that in this one. Yeah, you you did the game plan and the strategy and all that, and that yeah, Shane, that that's exactly what I was going to ask you too. Is like, like, can that be learned? Like what you're talking about, having that confidence. So what you described was confidence versus arrogance. We've all seen that cocky idiot tech that just massacres everything he touches and and just quits, you know, but. But what you're talking about is confidence and, and you, you, you know, you broke down the fundamentals that you learned, you know, with Mike and, and then you, then you furthered your training with David at, at yeah. uh, SOS Dense and, and you're still furthering your training because of what you took on there. That was a learning experience. I bet I'm guessing. Right. Yeah. I mean, in, we're, in that, we're always learning, you know? Yeah, exactly. You're growing. And yeah. so that can be learned then. Like, so somebody to the person watching this right now, who's struggling, 
you know, or sees that and thinks, man, I'm never going to fix that. Right. You know, uh, I'm struggling with smaller dents. Well, you broke it down already by saying it's just a, basically it's the same concept as a little dent. It's just more of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially then a person who's struggling with this stuff right now can listen to what you're saying and watch what you did there and realize I can put the same mentality that Shane's putting in the, the fundamentals and the confidence, applying it, taking action and into a little ding right. and be successful and just yeah. take a little bit notch, just keep putting in the reps and break past each barrier the, using the mind. Right. You can, you can break through. It doesn't, it seems impossible at first, yeah. but you have to push yourself to break through. I think you have to push ourselves. I, I may, I think maybe the moral of the whole story here is, we don't necessarily have to fix a dent just like that, but we do yeah. have to push our, our boundaries and right. it's all relative, like strength conditioning. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. Cause it, you know, you, you can't grow if you don't push yourself. Yeah. Like I said, it was with strength, you know, with, you know, strength training, you know, your, your muscles can't grow. You're, you're not going to get stronger, or, you know, unless you push past where you're currently at, you know, right. And, right. um, you know, that's where that growth is going to happen, you know, and, and even if, you know, and, and, and even if this hadn't, you know, were played out, you know, a, 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 as well as it did, or, you know, if I hadn't ended up out walking away, you know, I, I would hope that, you know, it's like I, that I would have at least learned something for the next one. You know what I mean? Right. That's uh, right. You either win or learn, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Most, yeah. And, <laughs> like you, you know. did. <laughs> I think, Shane, I probably would have kept, I mean, I've, there's no way I would have done that mobile today for me personally. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I would have said, bring that to my shop, leave that for me for two or three days, you know, and yeah. I'd, probably, I'd probably make it worse before it got better. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, uh, I think this is a, a really good topic here that we touched base on. Um, we're going to have to wrap it up, guys, because we're going a little bit over. But <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, yeah, there's definitely more. Amazing you know. job, dude. Amazing job, dude. Yeah. yeah. Good job, man. Great, great Thank job. You, Thank you. Yeah. But uh, yeah, were you able to get the, some of the tools in there? Mike, I don't know what was recorded, what wasn't. If you got you know, like, Go ahead. Yeah, give, give, give us some breakdowns about what you were doing, dude. Like what, some tools, and then we'll end it on that. Okay. I mean, most of, you know, let me grab, uh, so, I mean, always my go-to, my, one of my favorite tools is the care point bar. So I use this for majority of that damage. Um, you know, I just, to me, it's just a, it's just a freaking, I mean, it's an awesome, it's an awesome bar. Um, now you have the dent dial too, is right as well, right? Uh, no, I just have the, I have this, I have the care point and I have the anaconda. I don't have the dent dial. Okay. All right. So I have the Anaconda, but you know, I, this is my, this is my go-to. Um, so this was, this, that was used for mo most of that dent. Um, obviously, and then just, you know, also use just the basic, you know, your ultra double bed, you know, um, and then to, to work under that, that front, the front area there that was under the, you know, the plate bracing and all that was, you know, used to you got a wheel tail, small mm -hmm. belt and then just like a like a hook you know hockey puck you know tool that's kind of what was, those are the main ones that he was using for underneath that uh to pick those out and i think i actually might have used a uh a door tool to squeeze in between there as well at the end um um but uh and then you know i was telling you how i bent the um that edge the inner fender lip i bent it i actually bent it like down so it was more straight like as a night like in a 90 degree angle um and that, that was what i would i use this so i don't know this is like a newer tool yeah, anson, yeah. anson has yeah, these yeah, yeah right. for the, to, to for the edge blowouts this was this is the c-clamp replacer <laughs> yeah. So, yeah yeah but uh so this thing is is really really nice it, it gets those edges uh i'm trying my, my opposite here but um yeah it gets those edges really clean it's cam auto right uh, I got it from Anson. I don't know. It might yeah, be from Camado. Different, I don't know. Different people are selling them now. So yeah, so, so I, got, right. I got I got them from Anson. Okay. Um, but um, you know, so I, I had bent that bottom edge straight, um, and that actually because because I, I had where the the crease went, it was like actually right behind 
the, that lip. So I, I wasn't able to get a good solid shot. Like as you got to that very end of that crease there, that inner lip was like blocking my tool tips, you know, and I, and I didn't want to try to get a hook in there and not get, and I wanted a, a solid of a straight push on that, that crease as possible. So I ended up bending that down. So I had a nice straight shot, um, on that, on that, on the crease yeah. there. Where number four is. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> Look at that stuff there. I think it looks crazy. man. Look at all that stuff here. Um, real quick guys, just touch base real quick. Are you going to MTE? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm still working. I'm, I'm probably going to be there. I'm, I'm working that out now still. Cause it's, uh, it falls on the weekend of, uh, my wife and I, uh, our anniversary. So, mm. so, uh, I'm probably going to go out and then have her fly out <laughs> and then and stay. That the I'm, out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, really? But, um, I think, I think I'm going to still be able to make it work. So okay. I, I could still be there. Joe? Yeah, I, I'm going. I'll see you in Orlando. I'll put it that way. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, All right, right there, dude. dude. Drive. <laughs> Drive out there. No. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, I got some convincing to do for a little bit for him, dude. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. Get him out there. I'll try to see if I can convince him. Or, or his, well, we'll see what the reasons are. He's not really elaborating, so we'll see. Oh, come <laughs> on. Uh, <laughs> well, you guys, I, I just want to say. Uh, Shane, thanks for coming on, man. You, yeah, man. you, uh, a great repair, killed it. You're inspiring yeah. a lot of younger techs out there, even the older guys, you know. <laughs> sure. And, yes, um, you are. fantastic, dude. Thanks yeah, for coming man. on. Man. Thank, Thank you, you for having me, man. Thanks, thanks Shane. Me. All right, dude. Up, oh, shit. I just cut him off like that. Did man. You cut him off. That's how you get rid of the guests, man. That's how you do it. <laughs> Boot him out. <laughs> no, hold on. Oh, oh there damn. <laughs> Booted your ass out, man. <laughs> wow, get out of the car. Hey, hey, thanks, man. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, so, all right, man. guys. We're going to end it on that note. Hey, listen, don't forget to follow uh, Mr. Joe Dent Evo over there at dentevo.com and Dent Evo on Instagram. He's got some awesome posts and all that good stuff. And don't forget to let us know what you think about the show in the comments. And we'd love to hear back from you guys and all that good stuff. Meanwhile, check us out all over on the podcast. You guys will see us. Take care. <laughs>